<laughs> Robin. You're listening to Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony on the virus. Serious XM. We're very, very yes. excited and happy to have Tom Sizemore back in our studio. We were here about a year ago, I guess. Yes. Um, was it a year ago? Uh, about that, yeah. Probably about a year ago. Yeah, it was yeah. that long ago. Because I remember you telling us that you were going to write a book. And guess what? The book is here, and it's amazing. It's rare, one of those rare times I did what I said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> out today is called By Some Miracle, I Made It Out of There. And uh, I guess I'm about 80, 85% of the way through it. And it's, it's extremely honest. I mean, you yeah. really, uh, you don't paint... A pretty picture for the sake of painting a pretty picture. It wasn't pretty. No, but it's nice that you talk about it. I know. It's easy to just say that, but a lot of guys uh, certainly would leave out a lot of stories. Uh, I think I what's going to sell this book is the honesty of it. Yeah, just push that thing up real. Yeah, just just yeah, break yeah, it yeah. in half. Who cares? Yeah, there we go. I don't want to break anything anymore. <laughs> no? <laughs> in here, you can break shit. We don't care. Broke my self, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to make it honest, so I just get it uh, all out there and... Yeah, there are no more skeletons in the closet now. Was there anything that you were talking about? Because you, 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 I said to Tom in the break, I'm like, you really name names, because meaning that you, you name the people. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people don't mention. I, I don't know. Name a name sounds like a, like a punk to me, but I, I don't think I name names. I just I talked about certain people that had impacted my life. Well, mm -hmm. naming names, I mean, you simply. I didn't say anybody like did drugs. Or no, no, no. But you mentioned real people. Kind of shit. Well, the, the the people that were in my life were real. <laughs> Still, how yeah, many people yeah. don't do that? When I, don't live, I, don't, I don't live in a fantasy world like uh, like our young people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just say whatever you want on the internet and just slam somebody and then you know, bomb somebody, whatever. And right. then not have any and accountability. Go to, go to a commercial. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Right. No accountability. No accountability. Nothing. Mm. Was there anything that you were covering that mm. became really uh, painful that you kind of wished you didn't cover while you were doing it? Um, there's a book signing tonight at uh, Barnes and Noble. <laughs> Is that what he's, he's <laughs> throwing at you? <laughs> yeah. like, ah, tell him we'll get to it. We know what we're doing. <laughs> oh yeah, he's not my fucking first day in the rodeo. <laughs> I know how to do an interview. I'll get he's to the point. He's panicky already, that guy. He's panicky. No, he's not. He's, a, he's my manager. He's a wonderful guy. All right. I'm sorry, Tom. Um, <laughs> what did you say? Uh, was there anything? A, I, I left out about 99% of the people that are assholes. Was really? It, say, was there anything that you were covering that you kind of... Uh, became really painful while you were talking about it, and you kind of were like, oof, I wish I didn't go into this, but it's too late, I've already started. I, well, Anna and David and I worked on the book for um, a year and four months. Well, wow. And um, we met three times a week, and um, hmm. we started, um, initially the first meeting was, um, we were trying to figure out how we would do and what we would, how we would do it. And I said, my first memory is when I was four, and I said, why don't we start there, and we'll do the age age of four, and then we'll do the age of five, and we'll do the age of six, and we'll do the age of seven, and we'll do the age of eight, and that's how we did it. Right. So um, it was a, a huge amount of, um, uh, she'd ask me questions, and I would have come in with things I wanted to talk about from age seven, and uh, she t would tape it, and then she would have it um, transposed, uh, so you could read it, and um, <clears throat> she'd edit it, and, it, and then give it to me, and... Um, it was a painstaking process, and uh, it was a tome, and that she was able to cut it down to 226 pages is mm. quite, quite, quite a, a testament to her, to her talent. Um, it must be uh, kind of freeing, though, that, to put everything out there so no one could really hold anything over your head anymore, right? The, the, all, the, all the skeletons are out of the closet. Yeah, yeah. 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 What, the first time you tried crystal meth... Um, you know, you were sober when you heard about that, or that that kind of was a relapse for you. Um, well, I don't. I was sober. I mean, I was clean. I wasn't doing drugs, but I wasn't sober. I, mean, I wasn't working a program or anything. I was. Mm. I just hadn't used in ninety since ninety seven. Okay. So, um, I initially was going to meetings and stuff. That's what I do now. I mean, I now I do the footwork. Um, you know, all these old cl these, these cliches that I just thought were. You know, silly and, and they all they all work. That's, huh. why, that's why they're cliches. Um, <laughs> which is, um, you got to get a sponsor, and you got to work the steps, and you got to go to meetings, and you got to get a commitment. And, and if you feel like um, you don't want to do something with regard to your sobriety, that's probably what you should do. Yeah. And um, I don't like being like a, such a serious person. <laughs> But yeah, it, yeah. Being, being sober is serious business, and, and it, it, it has gotten lighter and more lighthearted. And Bob Forrest keeps um, 
I don't get to t- talk to him enough. Um, I talk to him more often. You know, Bob said as time goes on, you know, the um, you know the lightness in life returns. And um, mm. but you know, I was in a seriously, seriously in bad, tr- bad shape. So <clears throat> I took I had to take it very seriously about. You know, I just can't put anything in my body. You know, I got an allergy with uh, any type of substance. I mean, yeah. If I drink a glass of wine, I mean, it's just. I mean, I've, I've done it enough times now that I, I know that I don't stop. I was amazed at how many, because you talk a lot about the relapses, how many relapses that you actually planned. Like, okay, I knew I was flying to Chicago. I think you said at the time your wife's mother was ill. She's like, I was planning to relapse and, and to get high. I'm I like, didn't say I was planning to relapse. I was well, you, planning to get high. Well, yeah, I would get high. Yeah, because I was going to be out of sight of my wife, who hmm. I lost because of this addiction. It was, um, you know, pardon me, Opie, I'm, I'm, I'm this... I've been here. I've been in New York for a few days, and I'm, 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 a little, I'm just a little tired. Mm. I don't do drugs anymore. So, mm-hmm. well, I would be probably really even more tired, or I might be like, really off the wall. Yeah, 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 like, when can we get this guy out of the studio? Strung out. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a human being right now. And I, I woke up. <laughs> it's <you> know, fine, man. <laughs> I'm trying to drink my coffee and get and wake up. It's yeah, all yeah, good. But um, I lost Maeve over. Um, I just exhausted her. I mean, I was I was much younger, and I was um, I was the when Reggie Bush was at USC of drug addicts. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could just get through any kind of crack. You know, it was a little bit of the ray of daylight there to get downtown. <laughs> you know, wow. I, I'd land in New York at uh, Kennedy Airport, and I had the same driver, and I didn't have to tell the guy what to do. He knew where right where to go. He went to Alphabet City. Jeez. Oh, and um, you know, I had I had set up a system, I guess you would call it, where I could. Use drugs when I wasn't in front of people. That's hard to do when you're an actor. Yeah. And you're married. And, um, you know, when you get caught enough times, you just go, oh, the hell with it. It's like, you know, she finally caught me enough times. And because uh, a long time people, I mean, no one knew but her for a great deal of time. And, um, Finally, you know, I just couldn't hide it from her anymore, and I, and I didn't want to hide it. I mean, I wanted it. I had this huge secret. Yeah. And it was it was killing me too. And it was it was Im- impacting my work. Although I could tell, no one else could tell because it's it was very subtle. You know, I, I was missing the uh, nuances and the um, I wasn't as facile because you know acting is a, re- a, a you know it's a you know it's a indefinable type of thing you know. But um, the one thing that does happen is that you do something, then I do something. And right. What, what you do predicates what I is. What I do is predicated upon what you do, mm. and if I'm not able to really see what you're doing, or to watch it, you know, and see the nuances in what you might be doing, and I miss it, then the scene starts to, you know, doesn't feel right. And um, trust me, I tell you, the couple actors I worked with pulled me aside and said, "Uh, yeah, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you didn't see that." Wow. I mean, I, know, I know it was very subtle what I did, but and um, and people thought I was a very good actor. And um, I would say the same thing all the time. I'm tired. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I won't miss it again. And um, it didn't happen often. Um, I didn't use that much at work. But, you know, if you've ever used drugs, I mean, one of the, way, one of the times you're, you're at your worst is when you don't have the drugs the first couple weeks after you've had a long run. You, you know, you're in the withdrawal, regardless of what the drug is. And you're just not hitting on all cylinders. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm f- almost four years sober now, and I don't think I was, I don't really think I'm hitting all cylinders yet. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm markedly better. I'd say I'm 80%, 85% better. Are there actors that you had worked with that have completely won't talk to you or work with you anymore? Have you no. burnt bridges to that point? No, 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 no. no. Okay. Well, yeah, maybe. No, maybe. <laughs> yeah, one guy. But he's on a movie in 15 years. I mean, yeah. He only did one. He's a singer. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm guessing it's Mark Anthony because there's a nice part in the book where you talk about fist fighting him. I didn't oh, have wow. a fist fight with anybody. Didn't it say I, you had, I, you had never, to pull, I pull I you I haven't had a fist fight with anybody except my brother, Aaron, yeah, since I was like 17. What, what happened? They had, they had to pull you probably younger? Brother, my no, brother no, was no, a bad son of a bitch. I mean, he kicked the shit out of you as he did me. <laughs> He's 18 months younger than me. He started doing push-ups under the bed when he was 12, pushing the bed up in the air. Jesus. <laughs> to kick my ass. With Specifically Ma- to kick my ass. Wow. With Mark, I mean, what, was it, do you guys just you not can't, What am I going to do? Hit him? I'm going to kill him. <laughs> what, what, He's 92 pounds. What didn't you like about each other? What is there to like about him? I don't want to talk about the guy. I don't even want to talk about the guy. I mean, I, I, he told me, I said, who are you? He goes, I'm the next Frank Sinatra. It was downhill from there. 
Yeah, it's not really a Hummer. I, I never met the next Frank Sinatra. I still haven't. No, of course not. It hasn't been <laughs> I knew born Frank, yet. I knew Frank Sinatra. Did you really? Yeah, yeah I got to, I was offered that, that miniseries with uh, Eugenie Gershon back in 92. I was offered to play Frank. Wow, oh, wow. Yeah, I met yeah. with um, uh, Tina uh, numerous times, and I got to go meet the old man. And... Um, what do you I think of him? I, well, I, it was a, he's Frank Sinatra. No, I mean, what do you think? What did you think of him when you met him? He's Frank Sinatra. Just <laughs> as simple as that. He was, he was really, he was really great. Right. He gave me a couple ties. He said, um, if, "If you do this, you got to lose about thirty pounds." <laughs> yeah, shit. You're gonna play when I'm young, and um, I didn't think I had enough time to to, to do it. And then, and I, as I thought about it, that's the kind of movie you would do with uh, Scorsese or something. Mm-hmm. I, I turned it down. An actor named Phil Kazanoff did it. I don't know what happened to Mr. Kazanoff, but he, he was he was he was good. At, um, but I haven't met the next Frank Sinatra, nor, nor have I met the next uh, Michael Jordan. And I haven't met uh, I haven't met a lot of the next guys. I haven't right. met the next Larry Bird. Right. And you, you know you don't you don't hear Kevin Durant going, "I'm the next Larry Bird." <laughs> That's cocky. I'm That'd the next cocky. Larry Bird. Right. I mean, Kobe Bryant. I mean, can we talk about Kobe Bryant for a minute? Yeah. Uh, Seventeen years with the same team. He had more minutes played than any NBA player in history. You know that, right? I didn't know that. More minutes on the floor as a NFL as an NBA player. And you take into account his postseason. They've gone deep in the postseason twelve times, mm-hmm. and then the Olympics. And the, it's he's played that however many minutes Michael played. He's played half again that many. He's played the equivalent of Chamberlain's minutes at forty-one. Wow. And he's thirty-four. He's seventeen year old when he came in the league. And um, I just I, I feel like he's a. He said he thought that when in Los Angeles was his brother and sister, and I just hope he gets better. And they say it's a nine month rehab. They wore him out. He, well, he his, wore himself out. I mean, he didn't. I don't. He think wouldn't take himself out of the games. He, he, Dan Tony. He, Dan Tony's getting a bad rap here, but I think that I don't know how you stand up to Kobe. I mean, you know, look. Kobe I wanna, pretty much demanded to play every minute of every game because well, he wanted they to make in, the playoffs. Yeah, they were in it, and uh, he blew out his Achilles. Uh, and I really, I really think, a rough injury. No, but listen, Tom. they tore it in half. Yeah, I know. He got up and made the free throws and walked off the floor. Now, Terrell, Terrell Davis did the same thing and said he couldn't walk for nine months. When he tore his Achilles, Kobe didn't even act like it was really hurt. He got up, he banked, he made both free throws, he walked to the bench, he sat down, he refused any help, and he walked to the locker room. Hmm. No athlete that has ever torn an Achilles tendon has walked anywhere hmm. as they tore it. And I, I, I've, I've, I've maintained that um, it's Michael and Kobe, you know, the two greatest individual. I, mean, I think Larry might be the greatest team player in Magic. Those are the four of my four guys. And I just hope, I wanted to say to Mr. Bryant and uh, his family, I hope that Mr. Uh, Kobe, I've been there in L.A. the whole time he's been there. And I do feel like he's a brother right. uh, of mine, and um, I hope he gets better. And, and, and it's going to be tough. So many, so many great, great enjoyment over the years, and uh, you're the greatest athlete of my generation. Hmm. Do you feel like, um, you know, you, you're you're obviously a very very respected guy in, in in the business. You're a very respected actor. Your work is tremendous. I mean, you know, Natural Born Killer, Saving Private Ryan. I mean, there's a lot of amazing work. And then you had a, a downfall. You went to jail. And do you I feel to, like, I went to prison? Okay, prison. No, jail's jail. Jail's a Holiday Inn. You went to prison. Prison's not the Holiday Inn. Prison's <laughs> prison. Do you right. feel like you've you're kind of back where you want to be, or you're still kind of fighting your way back? Um. Oh shit, man! I mean, I'm not where I want to be. I'm, I want to. <laughs> I lost eight years. Hmm. Uh, getting them back. That's just a fact. I um. Yeah. I've had to do over again. Of course, I wouldn't have done these things. Um. I was really hitting my stride there with my work, but once I started to do well, I was incredibly uncomfortable doing well, and um, I can only. Uh, you know, I'm just guessing. I'm no doctor, but I'm. <sighs> the story's not about it. This isn't a book about addiction. This, this is a story about a guy, me, who was a very from modest beginnings, who had a dream about being an actor, and against all odds, became one, mm-hmm. and then was working with the greatest people on earth. Uh, the only guy I ever had on my wall was Pete Maravich and um, mm-hmm. Robert De Niro, and this guy becomes my closest friend for some time, and. Um, um, Took part in when, intervention. When I, when I, when I let, let me finish. Don't be Howard to me. <laughs> I can't finish with Howard. He won't, <laughs> he won't let you finish. I love him, but he won't let you finish. I wasn't trying to not let you finish. I was just. I'm not mad at me. I'm not mad at you. Got yeah, it. yeah, yeah, you're a little mad at me. You're a little, a little irritated. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I can tell. Good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, that I, I got what I wanted, and then I destroyed it. 
I worked my ass off to get it, and then I I ruined it. Mm-hmm. It's all I ever wanted to be was an actor. Once I just started to do it. Any idea why? I was uncomfortable with it. I was uncomfortable being successful. I wasn't ready for it. And I I felt, I always felt like when I initially started to do well, that someone was going to come over and go, hey, go home. You're full mm. of shit. You're full of shit. Go home. And I don't know why I felt like that, because I wasn't full of shit. I mean, I was, not mm. you know, it's just, I'm sure everyone here has been around people that they admired and stuff, and then, you know, felt a certain kind of nervousness. Mm. I didn't have a certainty about myself that I wish I'd had. Hmm. Hmm. So, Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, I, you know, where does the uncertainty come from? Your your upbringing, Tom. Um, Can you trace it back to something? Or yeah, I, I don't. You know, it's really easy to blame your parents, but I'm going to blame them anyway. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think in the end we all blame our parents. <laughs> and it's really easy to blame your dad when he leaves your mother. I'm going to blame the shit out of him. <laughs> um, well, my, my my father and. Uh, Nothing was good enough. I mean, he went to Harvard and... Uh, oh, wow. A lot of guys go to Harvard and things are good enough. I mean, I'm a father and I just want my kids to do the best they can do and um, that's great. Um, yeah. I would do algebra story... I remember doing story problems and he would be over me and I'd be crying. And he would say, are you the dumbest son of a bitch on earth? You don't know what the fucking answer is, you fucking idiot. Now, that is no way to talk to a child. Hmm. That's not no way to talk to a, ni- ni- a kid in ninth grade who's in honor, honors algebra, when I said, I'm not ready for honors algebra, I don't want to be in honors algebra, I don't know how to do this, I mean, I got an A in, a in math last year, but, I mean, I, I didn't do, it was hard, I didn't like it, I don't really get it, and um, he's, we're going to do it anyway, and there's no, there was no discussion with him, it's like this, and that's it. You couldn't go, hey, Dad, you know, I, no, 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 you get your ass kicked for that. No, I asked you, you just you didn't do it. You just, you know, I knew it from early age. You just mm-hmm. didn't take him to task about it, the goddamn thing. You didn't ever take, as a question is what is, a, he was he was the authority figure, and what he said was the way it was, and that was it. I flung, I was in the middle of the, 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 the first, uh, by, the end, by Thanksgiving, my algebra teacher had called my mother and father and said, he's, he's, he's way behind. He's getting a C. He's going down to a D. We got to put him back in just that regular algebra. And I was punished for that and just with his looks for like a year. And he finally said, you humiliated me. I don't, how do I humiliate you? I mean, I just didn't know how to do it. I don't, I don't like math. I mean, um, mm. and I liked, you know, certain things I liked. And, um, you know, when I wanted to become an actor, he called me Steve because he, I didn't know what he meant. They call me Steve McQueen. Oh, know? Steve McQueen, yeah. Hey, Steve. Hey, Steve, where's your car? Well, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, that, maybe was, that's part of it. Uh, so he didn't, he didn't support uh, your line oh, of work. My, my desire to be an actor was not met with any enthusiasm at all by no, anybody. No, wow. No. So what, I, don't, I don't think many parents, I mean, if my kids wanted to be an actors, actors, I would be hard-pressed to go, that's a great idea. Being an actor is just a really easy thing to do. You can make a great living at it, and you meet wonderful people. Um... You meet a lot of nice people, but it's not an easy thing to do, and it's very hard to be successful at it, and it's hard to sustain a career. I mean, how many actors do we know that just aren't doing well right now, that didn't do anything like I did, and are having trouble getting work? Yeah. It's just not a consistent way to make a living. But I would support them. Okay, that's what I was going to ask you. But you I would, would at least support them, but you would lay it out like, "Look, it's not as well, easy as you think them, it would I, be." I'd lay it out there like this: Here, this is what this is what the probability of you. I don't want to dissuade you from it, but here's what. From being an actor, this is what you're gonna look. This is what's gonna. This is what it looks like. Now, knowing this, now you make up your mind. Now they couldn't do that for me because they didn't know. They just let my dad would look at the TV and go, "You think you're gonna be on this TV? Are you the biggest asshole that ever lived? <laughs> you're, a, you're an idiot. You're a moron. This is Spartacus. You're gonna be in Spartacus." And I yes, go, "Well, uh, I'm not gonna be in Spartacus. They made it already. <laughs> okay, you're gonna be in the next Spartacus." So no real. You, know, you just gotta leave the room, Tom. So the question is this: uh, How did he feel when you made it? Was he around? Yeah, he was happy I made it. You know, listen, he was a mixed bag. My dad was most my hero. I loved him. He was uh, my, the, the, the things I'm talking about here were, were the, those little bl- glitches that would happen hmm. when big decisions had to be made. By and large, my father was the one, a wonderful father and a lo- loving father. He was my hero and my idol, and I, I loved him. He was a great teacher. And I'm um, a great person, and a loving father, and he loved the hell out of his kids. But um, with regard to like our futures, 
and what we were going to do and be. And uh, uh, he 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 had a lot of um, opinions about it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we always weren't the most. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, when you, someone's um, don't ask me. When uh, someone's trying to, when someone's uh. trying to, you know. Oh, you encouraging. Boost, encouraging. Yes. He wasn't the most encouraging at times about what you might want to do. Right. Well, what was his career path? Obviously, he was into math. My dad? Was he a math guy? Oh, Why was oh, he no, pushing no, math? No, he was a lawyer, but he was a very good at math. But, yeah, he pushed yeah. math on your side. I assume he was, he he was, he was, in, that, no, he was in education. Gotcha. He, he was in education. Okay. we got to plug the book properly, too. Um, you can see Tom tonight at the uh, Tribeca Barnes & Noble, 6 o'clock. It's 97 Warren Street here in New York. Uh, he will be signing this book, so you, you can go in and, uh, and say hello to Tom and get a copy of the book. It really is uh, a great book. It's called uh, By Some Miracle, I Made It Out of Here. Uh, I'm sorry, I made it out of there. I'm sorry. What? Uh, are you going to do the next fake dog shit with me? I might, yeah. It just depends on schedule. <laughs> if I can, I will. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tweet that out as well. Um, coming up, uh, we got Ricky Gervais coming in. Yeah, he's I right outside. So. Oh, yeah. Do you know Ricky Gervais? Oh, cool. Um, is he a singer? No, no he's a great uh, comic actor. Oh, I know he is. Genius. Yeah, I know, I know who he is. Yes, I know he is. Great guy. Um, so the book gets out today, right. and it truly is a great read. It's the first book I've read in a long time where the backstory of the family kept me very, very interested. Mm. Really? Uh, it was, yeah. It really did? Yeah, the father being a genius and not going back to Harvard. There was, there was a tremendous amount that I found fascinating. So well, uh, Thank you very much. I recommend this book highly. Absolutely. I got to piss. Yeah, we got to well, take a quick break. Tom, we're a very talented, Tom, thanks, man. gifted thanks, guy. Man. Thank you very much. Appreciate okay. it. Bye. Tell him, Fred. <laughs> the virus. Sirius XM. This is the Opie and Anthony Show.